Yeah, that's better. Now let's get to it. Today, I'm going to make a simple overpour mold of this. It's just a knob for a potentiometer. I'll be doing some steampunk projects in the future, so having an inexpensive and easy way to have several matching knobs and dials can come in useful. For this project, I'll be making a simple box mold for the purpose of having something to pour excess silicone into, hence the name overpour mold. At the time of recording this video, I was working on a mold for a bowling pin. I position the knob on the styrofoam, which is going to be the base of my box mold, with enough distance to allow for the side walls of the mold to be glued on. I also made sure to leave room for the sides of the mold to be at least a minimum of a half an inch thick. Now that I have my styrofoam parts cut, it's time to glue them together. I started with gluing the knob to the base, making sure that there is a complete seal made around the bottom with hot glue. Silicone is very sneaky and will leak out of a pinhole if it can find one. So I made sure to fill in all gaps as I glued the walls to the base. And there's the mold. It's pretty simple. The silicone that I'm pouring here is the excess from a different project. I started the pour off to the side of the mold subject because the first bit is generally a big lob. Once the pour is flowing, I move to coat the object. This is a really good example of the method that I use to minimize bubbles in my molds. You can clearly see the silicone being stretched by gravity and the bubbles close to the surface of the knob are being popped. By the time I start pouring the remainder of the silicone, the surface closest to the mold subject is nice and smooth. I poured the remaining silicone off to the side of the knob so I hopefully wouldn't disturb the smooth layer that I had just created. The silicone for this pour was mixed for the third pour on the other project. I tried to pour as much as I could into the main project's mold, and there really wasn't much left in the mixing container. However, there was just enough stuck to the sides of the container to finish this little mold.
the mold came out really good. The only imperfections are a couple bubbles that got trapped in the little line on the face of the knob. The hot glue came right off of the original knob and it's like nothing ever happened. Now it's time to mix up some resin and make a casting with my brand new mold. I added a drop of black resin pigment so my casting will match the original dial. When pouring resin into the mold, I overfilled the mold, relying on surface tension to keep the resin from spilling. The reason for overfilling the mold is that when it is placed into my pressure pot, any bubbles in the resin will be shrunk down and the excess resin will be needed to properly fill the mold. Before I opened my pressure pot, I made sure to release the air pressure first, that way it wouldn't explode on me. The resin must have spilled when I was tightening the lid of the pressure pot. Now to clean up the back of the casting. Here's the original. Here's the replica. The silicone mold was able to capture the detail of the crack that can be seen in the reflection of my shop lights. I think that it turned out pretty good. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.